You know, in my travels in my life, uh, I can say truth is stranger than fiction. Either I've experienced certain things that connect me with everybody from Jean Beliveau to Howard Cosell to Jerry Jones to different superstars of music or TV, all the celebrity events I've gone to. But this happened to a friend of mine, and it's kind of ironic how thing goes, uh, goes on. He decided to go to Las Vegas back in the day. I think it was either the late 80s or early 90s. And he walked into the Golden Nugget gambling casino, and he noticed a blackjack dealer. He said, he said to himself, this guy looks awful familiar. And he was a Cincinnati Reds fan. He looked over and he looked over and he said, he said, it couldn't be. And he went over to the guy after the, the round was done. He said, excuse me, sir, or do, should I know you? He said, are you Gary Nolan? He said, yes, but I'm working. He said, sir, uh, you know, uh, would you like an autograph when I'm done? No, no, I was just kind of freaking out. What the hell are you doing here? Well, he said, I'm working here at the Golden Nugget. Now, he eventually went on to be a greeter there and uh, quite successful. But Gary Nolan uh, was never what you call a gambler because with his talent, he didn't have to gamble on it because he was that talented. So, ladies and gentlemen, we got to two different requests uh, for, the, for, for Gary because we're doing something on the, the Big Red Machine, so it'll cover all the bases. Now, in my personal opinion, Gary Nolan is probably one of the most underrated players of that uh, Reds dynasty that uh, got to four World Series again between 1970 and 1976, winning two. Now, Gary Lynn Nolan, you got to be tough when your middle name is Lynn, is an American former pro baseball player. He played in MLB as a right-hander from 67 through 77, most notably as a member of the Reds dynasty that won four National League pennants and two World Series titles. Again, 70, 70 72, uh, 73, uh, 75, and 76 division, uh, division titles and, of course, four pennants. He played his final season with the Angels in their, uh, what he called their free agent uh, year of 77. In 83, Nolan was inducted in the Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame. Now, born in Herlong, California, his family then moved to Oroville, California when he was young. In February 65, age 17, he married his high school sweetheart, Carol Widener. He graduated from Oroville High School in 66. He was eventually drafted by the Reds in the first round, 13 overall, of the 66 Major League Baseball uh, draft. Now, here he is, a young married, starting baseball. His first Major League game, again, he was advanced as well, was at the age of 18. A hard thrower, Nolan had a promising debut on April 15, 67, when he struck out the side in the first inning en route to a 7-3 victory over the Astros. Now, uh, get this, he became the major prominence just a couple of months later, when on June 7th, he struck out future Baseball Hall of Famer Willie Mays four times in one game. He had 15 strikeouts in the contest, but was pulled in the eighth after giving up a three-run homer that uh, tied, it to, uh, tied it to Willie McCovey. The Giants eventually won 4-3. The kid was good, May said. He, uh, Nolan finished with a 14-8 record in a rookie season, was fourth in the National League in the ERA with 258, and the strikeouts with 206, and was third in the rookie year voting behind Tom Seaver of the Mets and Dick Hughes, if you can remember that guy, I don't remember him, of the Cardinals. Now, in 1970, Nolan won 18-7 with 181 strikeouts in the 326 ERA, helping the Reds to win the NL pennant, and established himself as one of the league's great young starting pitchers. Nolan pitched a remarkable nine innings of shutout ball to earn a victory in the 10-inning Game 1 of that year's NLCS against Pittsburgh. But he took the loss in Game 1 of the World Series against the eventual champions, the Baltimore Orioles. Now, after a rough 12-15 record in 71, he had 13 victories before the 72 All-Star Game and was a, was a selection there. Now, on the NL team... Nolan was suffering from neck and shoulder pains, which were recurring in his career, and he was forced to withdraw from the contests. After rehabbing his injuries on the disabled list, he returned to the lineup and finished the season 15 and 5 with a sub 2 ERA at 199, leading the league in winning percentage 77 50, and second to Steve Carlton ERA. In the World Series against Oakland that year, he lost game one, six innings, three runs, and was pulled from the game early in game six, which the Reds uh, won. Four and a third innings, one earned a run. Now, obviously, he didn't finish the five innings, so he couldn't get the victory. Now, arm problems forced Nolan to miss much of 73, and he missed the entire 74 season. He returned in 75 in good form with a 59 record with a 316 ERA. In the World Series against Boston, 
He pitched just six innings and two starts. In 76, he duplicated his 59 record and finally got his first World Series victory against the Yankees in the last game of a four-game sweep. However, new arm and shoulder problems bothered him in 77, and he opted to retire. Now, in 75, he earned a Hutch Award given annually to an active Major League player who best exemplifies the fighting spirit and competitive desire of Fred Hutchison by persevering through adversity. It is presented by the Fred Hutchison Cancer Research Center. Now, Nolan was pitching through... Uh, he always had trouble pitching. I don't know if he was just his style of play or, uh, you know, how, how he was throwing the ball or reacting, but, you know, it was almost like chronic uh, fibromyalgia or arthritis. Now, in his 10-season career, a very, very underrated record. Uh, he could have easily won 140 games because of injuries. He compiled a 110-70 record with over 1,000 strikeouts, a 3.08 ERA, 45 complete games, 14 shutouts, and 1,675 innings pitched in 250 games. All of them but three were starts. 11 postseason games, he was 2-2 two and two with a 3-34 ERA covering 59.1 innings. Now, noted as an excellent fielding pitcher, he committed only three errors and 287 total chances for a 90 fielding percentage among the best in history for pitchers whose careers spanned 10 seasons which were 1,500 innings or more. Now, after retiring from baseball, he again, like I had mentioned, he worked for 25 years in Las Vegas, first as a blackjack dealer at the Golden Nugget, and then as an executive host for guests of hotels, casinos, including the Mirage and the Gold Country Casino. In 99, a baseball park in Oroville was renamed the Gary Nolan Sports Complex, and it was elected in the Cincinnati Reds Hall of Fame, I think it's the first year of eligibility in 1983. When he moved back to Oroville in 2003, where he's involved with several charitable and civic organizations. He also works uh, on and off with young high school pitchers. In 2011, he was inducted into Oroville Union High School District Hall of Fame some well, 28 years after his Reds Hall of Fame. And at the time, ladies and gentlemen, he, had the, he wasn't even on his pension. So it's, a, it's a pretty, pretty, a pretty freaky. Now, Rough stats uh, don't tell the whole story, but we're going to go over to anyway because that's what we do here with all the, the, the Reds players. Um, 73 again and 74 were washouts, but in the consecutive seasons that he did pitch, 14 and 8, 9 and 4, 8 and 8, uh, 18 and 7, 12 and 15, 15 and 5, 15 and 9, 59 and 7, 5 and 76. And uh, in a split season with Cincinnati and California, <clears throat> four and four in only uh, five games. California with a rough 8.84 ERA. And the full season, uh, ladies and gentlemen, if you're looking at rough stats, he would be a 15 and 10 with a sub 310 ERA. So you gotta you gotta show uh, him great uh, respect. So postseason uh, pitching, uh, it uh, he went one and one in the postseason 1970. Of course, that rough lo loss uh, to Baltimore, the rough loss to uh, Oakland and uh, and uh, uh, 72 and again should get the victory in game six 75 again uh, uh, it was strong where he, he uh, started the three games uh, there 12 innings pitch uh, and uh, the NLCS uh, he had started one game in 76 in the World Series again uh, 6.2 innings pits and finally got that World Series victory so a four World Series he went uh, one and two and four uh, four LCSs. He went uh, one and zero. Oh. And again, uh, that was a big hole in Cincinnati's lineup, had not having him there in those uh, seasons. But I, ironically, ladies and gentlemen, he wasn't uh, too bad of a of a hitter as well. He had uh, thirty two RBIs in his career, so he would make a good t contact every once in a while. Give an example: nineteen sixty nine, he batted two twenty nine in thirty five plate appearances. So uh, and hit two triples that year, by the way. So he could he could bat when called upon, sort of like a Marcus Stroman. But Gary Nolan, boys, oh boys, oh boys, what a what a career! But I I don't know if anybody out there knows why. See, he was a he was a first round pick, uh, lucky number thirteen in nineteen sixty six, the June draft. So maybe that's why he got into uh, into Vegas. But I think what happened maybe he had connections with Las Vegas, because, you know, a lot of the Cincinnati players, uh, you know, had connections with the West Coast, 
uh, you don't expect someone right after retirement, he's only 30 years old, he goes from being a pro player to, uh, you know, being uh, part of the Las Vegas team, as we say. Usually in that case, it's usually boxers or higher-end uh, ba- baseball players, so it's it's kind of it's kind of weird on that. But uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think uh, like the similar similar players. Uh, uh, it was oh yeah, he did try a comeback uh, with the Brewers uh, in '78 uh, and uh, it didn't work out. But uh, this this guy, he was only making at the end fifty to sixty thousand dollars. So maybe that's why he went to Vegas. But uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, one of the French announcers who was doing the the 1976 World Series, and we talked about this in a second, he was basically saying Nolan finally gets his World Series victory, and it was kind of ironic. That was their last World Series victory until 1990, so uh, 14 years in the wilderness. But, you know, Gary Nolan, like I, like I said, a very underrated player because if you, you think of, of the, the Reds, the, the World Series teams, he's, he played a huge part in that. You need a 15-game winner to augment your ace. Like, he was always kind of a number two, if that makes any sense. Uh, you know, not the bad number two, but a good number two. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you like what we're doing, what our Cincinnati Red Legs, Cincinnati Reds, our vintage podcast on the Big Red Machine, or what we call the Reds Dynasty, let us know in a like, comments, uh, comment, subscribe, or share. By the way, before I leave you, I, I didn't have a chance to do a podcast but we're going to change uh, change moods here. If there's any Detroit Lions fans on the channel listening to this or will be listening to this, you have my condolences. That's one of the worst decision to not go for that field goal yesterday. You're up 14 points. It's a disgrace. I, I, really, I really think that guy should be fired. But like I said, you're not talking about the Cincinnati Reds mindset. Cincinnati wouldn't have been in that position to make a mistake like that. you got to have coaches that are not going to... like. You don't take out your best pitcher after 80 pitchers. You give him another chance, 20 more pitchers to make it go. And, you know, but that's why baseball is easy to understand football. I can't understand it anymore. When I was growing up, small ball, billy ball, whatever, that was big. And it's still big in certain ways. Or the tree run home run that I don't like your Weaver, but it's a great invention. But football, who knows? So I'm glad I'm, I'm talking baseball uh, to you because you, our baseball followers here understand baseball. If you can explain to me what football is all about now, is it about Taylor Swift getting excited by for her very ugly boyfriend and her and her future brother-in-law fat and ugly with no shirt on? Is that football, or is that like a frat house? I mean, what can you do? Anyway, maybe she should have stayed with John Mayer. Maybe that would allow Dallas to win this year. Cars, cosmic karma. Thanks for listening. Bye.